If you're getting annoyed by your slow progress on Peloton, then even just fixing one of the mistakes I'm gonna be talking about in this video that could seriously be holding you back could make a huge difference. And how do I know that? It's because I've made every single one of them, and when I stopped doing them, things changed a lot. Now, I must warn you that some of these things may not be exactly easy to do, but they are the things that I wish somebody had just shook me and screamed in my face so I would have actually paid attention to them. So here I am on my Peloton trying to figure out why I'm not getting any better, blaming the classes and programs or anything instead of myself. The thing is, that won't fix anything. So when I finally took 100% responsibility for how I performed, it instantly made me focus on making the changes that really mattered. This realization was the trigger that helped me fix every other mistake that I was making, starting with pushing too hard too often. So here's me in the middle of one of Kendall's metal rides, trying my best to keep up with the resistances and cadences that were well beyond my ability. I was just focused on pushing myself hard every class rather than what I needed to do, which was spend most of my time at lower intensities to build up my aerobic capacity, which is just a fancy way of saying my ability to breathe and deliver oxygen to keep my body going. Because in, in most cases, pushing yourself with high intensity more than once or twice per week actually does more harm than good when it comes to improving your performance. So if you're getting frustrated about not getting better on Peloton, try to make sure you're not taking a ton of classes each week that take you above your zone to a heart rate, which if you enter your max heart rate on the Peloton settings and wear a heart rate monitor or sports watch, Peloton will tell you which heart rate zone you are in. And for the most part, classes like Power Zone Endurance will keep the intensity within this zone. Or now you could just watch Netflix or check out some other entertainment Entertainment options, which is another great way to get in these lower intensity sessions. And by sticking to this more balanced training schedule, your body will more quickly develop everything it needs to continue improving your performance, both in the short and long term. And by doing this, I saw my FTP score, which you can get by taking a 20 minute max effort FTP test on Peloton, gradually rise from 180 all the way up to 250. This, however, leads me to mistake number two not taking the FTP test, which I get it. A 20 minute all out effort test is probably the least fun you could have on a Peloton bike, but it's worth it because not only will you have a metric to compare with in the future, but Peloton will give you your very own power zone bar, which will help you better understand which power outputs you should be trying to maintain while taking power zone classes. And as a beginner, it's usually best to take this FTP test once every four weeks. And then as you progress and become more advanced, you can take it much less often. However, if you are more advanced, there's another secret Peloton test that you should favorite and take occasionally as well, and that is the 45 minute power zone max test from Matt Wilpers, which came out on October 7th last year, because during this class, he has you testing a one minute max effort, a five minute max effort, and several 15 second max efforts. And the reason I suggest this class is because while the FTP test will put you in the right ballpark for your power zones, it isn't exactly right for everyone, and it definitely isn't for me. And that's because some of us are just genetically better geared towards sprinting, and some of us are more genetically inclined towards endurance. And so this class will help you better define what your zones five through seven should actually look like, which for me as a previous 100 meter sprinter, I can push those zones much higher than the standard Peloton power zone bar suggests. So it's really good information to have, and it's a nice alternative to see how you're progressing rather than always just testing your general 20 minute FTP. But it's not on the bike where I think the biggest Peloton mistakes are made, but actually off of it. Because for a lot of us, we take Peloton classes to lose or keep weight off. And so it's very common to try to diet or eat less calories. And while this is probably a good thing for a lot of us, I think it's important for us to understand and realize that performance on the bike is significantly harder to improve when you're on a calorie deficit. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating less, that's great. But also realize that performance on Peloton might progress a little slower as a result. And that's okay because after you lose the weight that you want and you bring your calories back up to more of a maintenance, then you should really be able to start seeing a big uptick in your numbers. And I know that's a hard thing to accept for some of us, but I find it very helpful to separate the times I'm trying to thin down and the times I'm trying to improve my Peloton output because really those two goals don't fall in line with each other and can make it frustrating if you expect them to. Now, let me know in the comments, what are some of the best tips that have helped you out the most with Peloton? And as always, this is Colin Jenkins with Connect the Watts. Make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest in connected fitness and fitness tech. Appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time.